years in the making. Supermodel Tyra Banks. Supermodel Naomi Campbell. Now on Tyra. It has to be just me and Naomi alone. The backstabbing, the name calling, the cat fight on the catwalk. You called me the B word. You said you'll never be me. Years of runway rivalry. I felt like you were terrorizing me. Explode in a dramatic confrontation. Why, Naomi? An all new Tyra starts now. Tomorrow is my conversation with Naomi, and it's been a lot of years of pain and a lot of tears, and and I still have all those memories of a lot of negativity, negativity from the press. I had to live through it, and it wasn't easy. I'm nervous about it. She probably is, too. I don't know. We'll see. I'll see you tomorrow, Naomi. Today, it's about telling the truth. It's about being honest. Because without honesty, there's no way that you can heal. And today is a healing day for me. And I hope it is a healing day for Naomi, too. I remember the very first time I saw a picture of Naomi. I was around 12, 13 years old, and I was sitting in the kitchen with my mama, and we were looking through some magazines, and there was this picture of this model, this black, beautiful model. And I was like, Ma, look how beautiful she is. It's funny, I felt worlds away from Naomi Campbell when I looked at that picture. But the ironic thing is that she would become a significant part of my personal history. And to admire somebody so much and to follow in their career, to actually follow in her footsteps, it was overwhelming for me in a lot of ways, especially since I was just a teenage girl at the time. And the press had cast Naomi and I as rivals before we had even met each other. And there's conditions in the modeling industry that are fueled by rivalry because back then, let's say there were 10 top models, 10 of them. But there was an unwritten rule, there was an unwritten rule, excuse me, that only one of them could be black. Only one. Ten girls, but only one could be black. And at, the, at that time, Naomi was that one black girl. Naomi Campbell set the modeling scene on fire almost 20 years ago when she was discovered on the streets of London and immediately began to saunter her way across the catwalk. As the first black model to grace the covers of French and British Vogue, Naomi was breaking down the walls of the predominantly white world of modeling. <laughs> Naomi traveled all over the world, working with the most prestigious fashion designers and sought after photographers. No way! By the mid 1990s, Naomi was amassing an empire, collecting more than $10,000 an hour from modeling jobs. From hit music videos, to dozens of commercials, Naomi has worked with the best. I am who I am. Naomi was one of my biggest inspirations when I began modeling. To this day, I still remember the joy I felt when the press first compared me to her. It was one of the most flattering compliments I've ever received. But the compliments and comparisons soon turned to controversy. In the headlines, there wasn't enough room at the top for two black models. press orchestrated a fierce rivalry between us. The reports were relentless and fueled a feud between Naomi and myself. For the media, the catwalk wasn't big enough for the both of us. I don't have an in-studio audience here with us today, so I'm going to ask you at home to please help me welcome Naomi Campbell. It's so weird because it's so quiet. I know. How are you? Oh. Have a seat. Thank you. First of all, Naomi, I just I want to thank you for coming here. You're welcome. Um, this is not easy for me. I know it's not easy for you too, especially with so many years and years of. But I thought it was a good idea. 
What did you think when, when, because I didn't want to call you personally because I wanted the first time for us to see each other. It's been a while. I, I didn't want to see, see you before here. the show because I think yes. it's better to be fresh. Um, but I'm happy to be here. I'm really happy. And I said yes right away. Yeah. I want to go back to um, when I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. So that was about, what, 14 years ago. Well, that was and how old was I? I was uh, 17. I was 18, 19, 20, 20. 21. Yeah. yeah 21. So 19. 91? Yeah, 1991. And I, I don't know if you know this, but even before I left for Paris, I had your pictures plastered all over my bedroom walls. I didn't know. Yeah, all. Oh. <laughs> I had your pictures all over my bedroom walls. And I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the Azadina Laya fashion show yeah, that we did together? Yeah, when we had the braids. Yes. Yeah, I we remember. Had the and the little white really things. Yeah, yes. I so you remember well. that fashion yeah, yeah. show. And I called my aunt. I said, she's right behind me. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. She's right here. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Just, just a couple of weeks ago, I was at home looking at her pictures and now I'm in a fashion show with her. <laughs> but Naomi, do you remember what you said to me? That's now, I want you something to... awful and cruel. Awful. What did I say? You said, I heard you talking about me. Which I do. I hear word. everything from everywhere. Yes. No, but no, you said you heard me physically. You were right behind me. You right. heard me talking about you. You called me a, the B word, uh -huh. and you said, and we have a photo shoot to do in Anguilla, and it's not going to be pleasant if, I, if you're talking about me like that. I probably did and say that. Why did you say that? Because I probably just heard the tail end or just thought it must be negative, which yeah. it wasn't negative, so now it's something yeah. new. So I'm really sorry. That was upsetting. What are some of the things that, um, specific things that people would say? You, and you, could, you don't have to worry about hurting my feelings or anything um, about me or about our, you know, Coexisting in an industry. What are some of the specific things they would say? And I can tell you some like of the it's specific just the regular, regular, She wants to be you, but mm -hmm. it's that those things for me, it doesn't matter now. It's now that matters for me and the timing of did I understand or did I believe in those people? Those mm -hmm. people didn't also help me because those people would still be the same people around me who would watch me be sad and watch me self-medicate and not and tell me, Naomi, you look beautiful, you look fine. Mm -hmm. I don't want those people around me. Those are the people that are very dangerous to have around you. Mm -hmm. So those people are no longer in my life. But at the time you bought into what they were saying? At the time, yeah. Because I'm trying to understand. At the, time, at the time, everything was just, there was photographers, there was editors, there was stylists, there was makeup and hair. It was just like, But did they ever compare? Drama. Because they would compare constantly. Oh, she's compared. three years older than you. I'm like three years, four years old, or of four years. they compared. That's the same thing. That's something that I constantly heard over and over again. And, but what I wanted to say, and, and to be very clear to you, is when I started to become a fashion model, I never tried to look like no, you. No, but that's how they, they made. Do, that, yeah. There was a certain look. You know, yeah, there yeah. was a certain look. You were the only one. You're the only black girl. Make every black girl's hair look like that. Make every black girl's makeup like that. Right. But that wasn't something that I, I perpetuated. Want, want I um, and I remember um, in, for the Aliyah thing, you know, the story with the Aliyah when you said... Uh, with the, the, the hair of the braids? Yes, the yeah. Aliyah fashion show when I was talking to my aunt and you, you know, kind of accosted me in the hallway there. Uh -huh. um, and then we went on that trip. We went on that trip in Anguilla. Anguilla. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it started beautiful. I was like, she, mama, I called my mama, mama, she brought me into her room and gave me vitamins. She was so I sweet to me. I remember we were at Cap Juluca. Yes, we were at Cap Juluca. Yeah. But I remember being on a boat and I get seasick. I was very seasick on you this boat. You were seasick boat. on that boat? Oh, I was, I yeah. I, I don't tell people. Like, I didn't, uh. especially in the beginning of my career. I just say, I'm just taking a nap. Really, I wanted to throw up. Okay. Yeah. So I was laying down on this uh, little plank thing. Uh, yeah, well, that boat shot there. I was laying down on a plank. I mean, laying down on a pillow. Yeah. And you came and you sat down next to me. And you, you, I think you let me put my head in your lap or you, or you put my, my feet on your lap. Right. And you're like, sweetie, are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, actually, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. And then you said, I have to ask you something. Right. See, I remember this because I was so new and young. You said, I have to ask you something. Do they try to make you look like me? Right. And I said, um, I don't know about so much now, but in L.A., yeah, they really did with the little short black wigs. You stuff. told me that. Yeah, yes. I remember. And Naomi, you got up, pushed me away, and said, yeah, I thought so. And you turned. I did. You went from the sweetest woman that was giving me vitamins to someone that terrified me on that trip. Oh, my God. And Understandable. I, I can understand. I was told on that trip that I was sent home because you didn't want me there anymore. So no, I didn't that's finish not that trip. true. That's what I was told. I don't have the power of Anna Winter. There are some specific things that I remember as if it was yesterday that hurt me and hurt me to my core. And I want to ask you about that. And I want to see if you remember them, too. 
We'll be right back. Up next, find out why I almost gave up modeling because of the rivalry with Naomi Campbell. So I picked up my backpack, walked out, and I was like, you know what, this is enough. Mm -hmm. This is enough. And I said, if she wants it this badly, she can have this entire industry it's that has been going on for over a decade. Um, do you remember that photo? Do yeah, remember I remember. That? I remember that photo because we didn't say one word to each other. It was after the thing that happened on the boat. Right. And it looks like we're just chilling and talking, but if you see there, you can, I feel the ice in that picture because I remember it like it was yesterday. I if don't that, remember. You don't remember? There I was remember no, only about the... There was no communication. I went from calling my mom, mm -hmm. like, you know, saying, oh my gosh, she's so amazing, to calling her going, I don't know what happened. Right. We just did a photo. She didn't speak to me. Like, I, don't it's, remember I remember just with your, I remember you telling me about the wigs. I don't remember anything else. You don't remember anything else, anything else. But I remember that the ending of that trip was not very, it was very cold. We did a fashion show. I, I don't remember what it was. It might have been Jenny or something like that in Milan. And we were doing that fashion show backstage. And you came up to me right when I was about to walk out. And you said something. And it's so funny because it was so surreal at the time when you said it. I didn't think that you could actually say something like that. What did I say? You said uh, something like, you'll never be me. Don't ever think that you'll be me and something I like that. I said that? Yes. I can't think. That's something. I'm not that. I'm very Specific. much in the, yeah, I'm very much, I know the person that I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm not someone to go and give myself away and say that to anybody. I've never said that in my life. So, but if that's what you remember, yeah. I accept that. But it's not, it doesn't sound like me to people that would know me. I'm not sure if you're understanding how, how much it was painful for me. And I think it was truly a painful time for you, but I don't want to speak for you. Mm -hmm. But, and I don't think you, you know this either, that, that that experience between you and I was one of the most difficult times in my entire life. In my entire life. See, for me, life. I can be really honest. I love modeling. I love this industry. It's given me a lot. It's shown me a lot. It's made me travel the world and meet amazing people. But with what I'm going through in my life in the last five or six years and what I've gone through of what I've come to know in making my mistakes, in maturing with my family, with myself, with my um, relationships, it's not life-threatening and it's not that deep. I am... Um, I really, it's not about, I didn't, I didn't know myself at that mm -hmm. age. I, I want to know what 20, between 20 to 25 year old really does know themselves mm -hmm. at that age. It's, especially in such a whirlwind career. What I was envious of yes. you was, you had your mother with you. Mm -hmm. I never was able to have my mother with me. I always remembered you had your mother at all your shows and she was always mm -hmm. there with you. And I thought that, that's, I wish that I could have my mother with me. Why couldn't your mother be with you? Because she just had a baby. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't possible she had to raise my brother. Let me tell you why my mother was with me. When I went to Paris, my mom wasn't with me. We couldn't afford it. Mm. I went at 17 years old, right out of high school. Right. So she actually had two jobs when I left and went to Paris. Right. We couldn't afford it. And there was a, a, a situation. Um, it was a Versace fashion show. Um, I was backstage getting my hair and makeup done. And this is about a year and a half into this feud thing that yeah. was going on. And... Then, uh, I think his name was Angelo, or Italian name, can't remember his name. Angelo. Angelo, was that his name? Mm -hmm. Okay. Angelo called me, um, and he said, Tyra, I need to talk to you. And right. I said, okay. And he had a really look, weird look on his face. And I said, um, what is it? He says, I have to cancel you from the fashion show. Right. And I was like... And you instantly thought that was because no, of me? No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. And I said, why? I just did my fitting. I did everything. The show's about to start in 20 minutes. And he gave me a look and kind of did like that toward you. And I was like... Okay. Well, do you ever know Johnny Versace? No. Okay, so just, if anyone that knows him, him knows you. I could never do that. But just so you know, you're not alone. Kate Moss was canceled after doing a fitting in a rehearsal. Yes. No, no, no. So I've, been, I've been canceled as a model a lot. I'm not, not, I'm I mean, not blaming but that's, you. That was, that was the story. Johnny Versace way. Like, yes. Um, oh, no, he's we notorious. Do, I knew yeah, he, was he was notorious for canceling for at the that. last minute. So that's not, not what I'm saying. Nothing to do with me. This is not my opinion. This is something that somebody did a head nod. said, yes. So I picked up my backpack walked out, and I was like, you know what, this is enough. Mm -hmm. This is enough, because I couldn't, I just couldn't take it anymore. I, I couldn't take it anymore. I went to a payphone, 
You called her? I called my mother and I said, Ma, I can't take it anymore. I dropped down to my knees mm -hmm. on, in that payphone. People were walking by, asked, trying to help me in French, and I was, they didn't know I was okay. It was just right. emotional. I said, I can't take it anymore. And I said, if she wants it this badly, she can have this entire industry. Mm -hmm. I got accepted to five colleges. I'm coming home and I'm mm -hmm. going to school. Right. That's what I told my mom. Um, my mom kind of calmed me down, and, and I said, well, the only way that I can do this is if you are by my side every day. single day. But don't you think some of the things are, like, blown up a little bit? When I would read the press, they'd be like, but this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a fight on the wrong way. This, I mean, it really was yes. blown up out of proportion. No, most definitely. It was definitely blown up and perpetuated. But there, to me, there are certain things in the press that come from nothing, and then there are certain things that come from truth. Absolutely. And I do feel that and the it press, came from somewhere. It came from. It, but I mean, the stuff that was written was not was exaggerated. Was you know people adding that little here and bits oh, here and always, there. Oh, that's always that's always going to be. That's always going to be that way. Truth. Because the because negative press wouldn't have made me want to quit. Only if it was mm. only negative press. You know, I was. To be honest, Naomi. I'm fearful of you to this day. Not right now. I feel safe. I feel like it's just me and you. There's not a lot of hoopla. Right. But even a couple of seasons ago, even a couple of years ago, when we did the Victoria's Secret fashion show, and I walk in the room and I see you, I'm like, I start shaking. My heart starts beating faster. I go back to the 17-year-old girl yeah, that, you used to be. that I used to be when this powerful, strong icon woman that I looked up to was terrorizing me. We're going to have more of it. We'll be right back. Up next, rumors swirled. But do you have proof that photographers were called? A lot of these people have nothing to gain mm -hmm. by saying that. Tensions rose backstage at high-profile fashion shows. I was tired of constantly hearing that this photographer was called or this magazine was mm -hmm. called and, and was telling to not use me. Tyra Banks hangs up her wings. I am retiring from modeling. Next time, Tyra takes you backstage at her final fashion show. This is it. This is like... Celebrity Surprises with Heidi Klum, Ricky Martin, and even Tyra's mom. Don't miss the triumph. Today is about following your dreams. And the tears. My final walk down the runway. Plus, Mary J. Blige. Next, Tyra. I'm having the conversation with Naomi Campbell that I have wanted to have for so long. And the day is here. There came a time in my career where I started to gain some weight. I started to get curvier. And I was told by my modeling agency that I needed to lose some weight. So I tried to lose some weight, and I was like, you know mm. what? This isn't for me. Right. And I'm going to have my agency call Victoria's Secret, call Sports Illustrated, so that I can change my career and won't have to worry about being so thin to be a high fashion model. And to this day, that's the story that I tell the press mm -hmm. as to why I left the fashion industry. I just didn't want to fit in those clothes anymore. I didn't want to have to, to, to be super healthy and eat only chicken and vegetables. But that's only 50% of it. Mm -hmm. The other half of that is I was tired of having to deal with you. I was tired of that pain. I was tired of the comparison. I was tired of constantly hearing that I got canceled from this job or this or that or this photographer was called or this magazine was mm -hmm. called and, and was telling to not use me. Mm -hmm. So I made a conscious decision and I said, you know what? I'm tired. I'm so tired of this. First of but all, do you have proof that photographers were called? Do you have any proof I have some close people with big names that I definitely will not tell their names today because they kick my butt. Yeah. But, I, but I have to say that I do believe a lot of it. I do believe a lot of it because there's a lot of these people have no, nothing to gain mm -hmm. by saying that. It's, they're, they're not people I that are gossip mongers. I can understand you want to believe it. For me, it's not important to me. Mm -hmm. As I said, I'm in a part of my life even then where it's, life means more to me than that. This is just a... The fashion world is a small pinnacle in the hemisphere mm -hmm. of what really is going on. But what happened at that time for and me, I Naomi, what happened for me at that time is a big part of who I am today. It was one of the lowest points in my life, but mm -hmm. we all learn from the things that happen in our lives that are negative. And I think that's what made me start T Zone. I think that the, that rivalry has made me start America's Next Top Model mm -hmm. because I says I will never be what that represented. 
Right. And I went 100% against that and said, and, and, I, and I don't think it was a conscious thing. It's something I look back on now and you go, maybe that's be. why. Maybe that's why I started my T-Zone. Maybe that's why I started America's Next Top Model. Maybe that's why I have this talk show. Mm -hmm. So to, to teach that no matter what people say or do or try to look at women as marionette puppets that they want to create this bickering and this battle and right. this fighting, that, that we, have to, we have to be bigger than that. Absolutely. We have to be more responsible than that. And so experiencing that, and being, I think, a victim, both of us, victims of that. But there's so many it more things out there to be victims of. But I don't actually want to ever say that I'm a victim. I'm someone passing through my life that's going to hit the lows, it's going to hit the highs, it's going to hit the successes. It's yes, but in being a victim, successes. you don't have to, to let that conquer you. It's, it's, it's being it's not, victimized it's not and then being me. empowered. It's not going to conquer me. Like, it's like in terms of like... When I wanted to go in recovery, it's the best thing I ever did in going to recovery. Mm -hmm. I learned so much about myself for years. From I can remember things from when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. And it was it just vi very vividly. And I was like, wow. It's like what from when you were three? Things that, like, that just affected me now. That I, and, and at that time when, I, when it came into mean, my mind. What do you mean by that? When, I was, when I was a child, um, something happened to me. And... My whole family was like, no, 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 she's crazy. And sexual abuse? Me. And it wasn't really sexual abuse. It could have been, but I was very much of a child that I, um, I came in and I, I, I spoke up very much for myself. I was like, mm -hmm. so I screamed out. I was like, go away. And that, by being loud. So it was the possibility but, of sexual yeah, abuse, but, but because she did I was stop loud, it. I got it. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just, it's, it's. I was in the desert, and I just was like, you know what? It's something that I want people to know that rehabilitation should be taught in schools because it's something, once you know the tools, you know when you're not happy, when to stop and say, I've got to take time out, mm -hmm. when to say, okay, I'm trying to please everybody, I'm not pleased, and this is not working for me, and not be afraid to say, I'm gonna, I, don't, I don't want to do this anymore because there's a lot of, like, you get so secure in one thing, and you say, okay, if it's over, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. I'm willing to just face things. At as one they time, come. you were afraid. Yeah, what I were think you afraid definitely. Of? I was afraid, like when I had to, when I was realized I had to go to rehab, and I was like, okay, um, I need to take up a month of work. <gasps> oh my God, I can't take up a month of work because I'm gonna miss this, 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 and I'm gonna miss this because I got a perfume. I'm like, what did you think would happen at that time? The fear if you I did had take off that month. What did it you wasn't think a fear of not, It wasn't a fear that I was gonna. Actually, I don't know. I wouldn't know. You could think your I stock would have gone down if yeah, you would have taken off that stock? It's not about stock. Time. It's about emotionally drained, spiritually drained. I would have been no good to myself, mm -hmm. not healthy in mind, not healthy in spirit. Mm -hmm. no, no, not good to anybody. We'll be right back. Up next, more with Naomi Campbell. I was really not knowing how to cope with grief. And how did you deal with it? I drank. Um, I went out. I just was like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I know I could hold out long. Campbell about the feud that has been going on between us for 14 years and I feel it's a, a conversation that we're having now I feel it's 14 years overdue do you feel like you've had to put up a lot of defense in this industry to, to survive in a, in a insane world I put up I put up defense because I don't want to show my vulnerability I put what up defense like it's like I think people who really know me Tyra can my really close friends, you know, I have a big heart, I'm very generous when I'm very loyal. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happier now than I was in my 20s. I'm mm -hmm. much happier now. I'm much... Why is that? Because the way I was living my life mm -hmm. then was too much. Mm -hmm. I was like trying to make everybody else happy, but I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. You weren't happy? No. So what did you do when, by not being happy? Because to me... Well, I tried to self-medicate, and I numb, tried to numb my pain. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 97 was a really difficult year for me. I lost six friends in very strange <laughs> circumstance, one of them being Johnny Versace. And I think that was a year that was a year when I started to go down because I was really not knowing how to cope with grief. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You didn't know. And how did you deal with it? You dealt with it by taking... I, I self-medicated myself. Mm -hmm. um, I drank. Um, I went out. I just was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't mm -hmm. worry about me. I'm fine. But each time another drama or another um, uh, um, grief uh, or death came into my life, I wasn't pr it wasn't enough time to catch up from the last grief. So it was just one big melting mm -hmm. ball. It just went rolled down. 
So when I met you, when I was 17 years old, say until I was a fashion model, until about 25 years old, mm -hmm. were you self-medicating yourself at all no, during that time? No, I didn't take my first drug until I was 24 years old. 24, mm -hmm. really? Let's go back to Paris. Let's go back to Paris. I'm 17 years old, mm -hmm. and all these people are saying these negative things. Oh, look out, Naomi. Here comes the new one. Uh-oh, you better get back. Oh, look, she's trying to look just like you. You better get that. How would you handle that now? If, if you I could, had if that you could do knowledge it, of... If you could do it all over again, um, how would you handle... I think I wouldn't. I just simply, really simply wouldn't have bought into it. I would have just not bought into it, and then it would never have escalated. Mm -hmm. I think when you buy into things... People are malicious, people like negative, like you said, said and sat here and gone over many times. And I think that only you are the one, if you pay attention, that makes it escalate. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize at that time that's what would happen. I was like listening because I was not a little older than you, but I was also not in my mm -hmm. country. I was also used to, oh, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. I think, you know, it really is buying into it. Mm -hmm. If I knew then not to buy into it, like I know now, it would never have escalated. And we would never be sitting on this couch right now. Uh, but I am happy to be sitting on this mm -hmm. couch right now. So, you know, I'm happy to, I don't know, when you, as you say, 14 years later, mm -hmm. to be sitting here and to wanting to have done this show. And I didn't really tell anybody that I was coming to this show because I didn't want to have to hear what they thought. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd come. They don't know I had to go to L.A. They don't know what I had to come there for. And they will now. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm happy that I came. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that you came yeah, too. I really am. I really am too. Are we ready for the audience? Yeah. Okay, because okay. I couldn't have done this with the audience here. So when we come back, we're going to have everybody here, the entire audience, and Naomi and I together for the first time in front of an audience in I don't know how long. A long you said time. 14 years. 14 years. She's 14 years. Yeah, 14 years. 14 years. All right, we'll be right back. Before the break, I have to say that one of my wishes, one of the biggest wishes that I've ever had has come true. I had a conversation with Naomi Campbell, a long, in-depth conversation, and I got a lot of answers, and it has started my healing from all of the devastating rumors and gossip and rivalry and pain that I have experienced. I've started to heal, and I think Naomi has too. And now the audience is here, right? <laughs> the audience is here. So now I want all of you and all of you to again welcome Miss Naomi Campbell. <laughs> Say before we start. Um, however, I've affected you. Or have you felt that I've affected you? I take my responsibility. I just want to say I'm very proud of you for being a powerful black woman sitting here and doing what you're doing. And please continue. Okay, we. Thank you so much. <laughs> Naomi, thank you so much for saying that because I have to admit. Um, before the break, it was a beginning, beginning of a healing. I know. But I still felt the like, yeah, Absolutely. I still felt like I don't think she's owning up to anything, or you know. And by you just saying that one thing, you have no idea I do. what my heart is doing now. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, I'm tearing up right now. You're tearing up right Thank now. You. And one of the uh, things that I didn't know and that you didn't know is that your mom and me have the same exact, same exact birthday. birthday. Why, do, why do you think that made you tear up when you found that out? I'm going through a lot with my mother. Um, my mother has breast cancer and um, also cancer in the arm. And she's right now in, a, in America having treatment. So it's been a lot of things. I mean, a lot of 
having to learn and read and books and doctors and I'm her only daughter and she has a uh, my brother is 20 and so it's been a just how valuable and my mother's really been the only one there for me so mm -hmm. it's like been very much like learning something new which is fine I'm happy to learn and um, I know that my mother's I'm very optimistic and so is she and they have incredible um, doctors in America Most definitely. and um, that's why I'm happy she's that she got her here and she's getting the best help and she's very happy and optimistic so so when you when you um so the, the reason why you teared up is because you're going through that with your mother. You say that I look like your mother, which I have uh -huh. to agree. I look like your mom, and we share the same birthday, and, and we've had a history. Yeah, So absolutely. it was just a whole bunch of emotions. It was a whole bunch of things, and that just, like, put the lid on it for me. Mm -hmm. Well, my prayers are, are, for, are with and for your mother, Thank and I'm you. sure my audience and everybody at home, too. Thank you so much. Thank you for her speedy recovery. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm so yeah. sorry. Oh, she's a fighter. Yes, she's a fighter. Yeah, she's a fighter. Okay, now one of the things Naomi that um, that I was fearful of in the past was this reputation. Oh, Naomi, she's she's violent. She'll kick your ass. You know, uh -huh. like don't mess with her. And uh, so I was, I was, I never saw that happen. But you hear all these crazy stories. Oh, I've and, had um, some crazy st um, things happen to me in my life. Absolutely, some that I am not proud of. Um, that if I could turn the clocks back. I would not have made them happen, which they'd never happened, but they happened. And as I said, I'm human, and I make mistakes, and I'm living with them. But I'm aware that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that no one should ever push you to the point of making you lose control. That is so important because it's, 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 it's all, everything, you've ever, every self-respect is gone. It's gone. It's gone. So what do you do now? I walk away. Yeah. Um, I mean, it can be a boyfriend. It can be a, I have to walk away. I can't, I can't relapse on my anger. Mm -hmm. um, because what happens is you're Naomi Campbell, also, the millionaire, and they're like, hit me, it, hit also, me right here. This, exactly. <laughs> hit me right here. You know, they'll take it, try to take advantage of that. But there's been situations where it has come up that, you know, because I have had that past, it's easy for people to say, oh, she did that to me, and it is a payout. And mm -hmm. that's that's the double, that's the double sided sword, basically, if that mm -hmm. what happens with that. Well, you, know, you do have a sense of humor about it. I got it. I yeah. mean, I think um, I was sent a t shirt last, last Fashion Week. Someone sent me a t shirt saying, Naomi hit me. And on the back, it said, I loved it. And they sent it yeah. to me, and they said, Well, will you wear it? And I said, Of course I'm going to wear it. What am I going to do? But, um, it's, you know um, what's so funny, uh, Miss, Miss J, uh, you Alexander? know, Miss, yeah, yeah. Miss J Alexander actually wore that shirt. He wore it. How did he get one? I don't Where know. Did he get it he from? wore it on America's Next Top Model. Did not. So I was gonna blur it out. Do you want me to still keep it in the show? No, or do you keep want it me in to the show. Okay, it's in the show. Let me start making that. It's in the show. <laughs> I was gonna blur it out. I was like, is she gonna think I did that? I didn't do that. Thank you. All right. No. Well, I know you have a sense of humor about this whole Violet Naomi thing, and you actually did a very funny commercial spoofing yourself. So you saw that? I have it. Oh my Check God. Check this out. Okay, so today we're going to talk about our anger. We have a new member. My name is Naomi. <laughs> okay, Naomi, okay. Oh. Vocalize the anger of Naomi. Now sit down in your chair. Sit down, Naomi. Now sit your butt down. Sit your skinny butt down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now tell me about your products. You have, I know you've got... Like five perfumes or six perfumes? Six perfumes. In, in your name? In my name. Okay, so tell us about them. And they've never really been in America. They've just been like in Europe and Asia and Middle East. And now the seventh one will be for the United States. Oh, really? So, Hold them um, up. Let's see them. Tell let's us see what them. they are. This is Sunset. The first one ever was uh, this one, Naomi Campbell. And this is, look, I didn't actually want to take this, con this kind of deal because I didn't want to put my name on a product because the promotion is heavy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, at first, can you put someone else's name? I'll just do it. Let's call it Sunflower or something. Like, we can't do that. And then we've got a couple myths that What's I'm What's the names, just in case people want to buy them? This is Mystery, Naomi Campbell, Naomi Campbell Sunset. That's okay. just Naomi Campbell, the first one. Then we've got Naomi Campbell Paradise Passion. 
And then all of them have like body lotions and. Um, she just don't know how to display it. Explain it all I backwards. Do not. <laughs> body lotions and. I know you're trying not to be very product placement heavy. I know but I'm not good at this at all. Yeah. Body, body lotions. Yeah. Um, this is how you do it. And sh shower gel. See, I know how to do it. And so I can, she's being I can use product modest. placement for other people, but not for myself. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. So can you get them on the internet? Yes, you can. Get them on okay. So even though Naomi says that these mostly are sold um, overseas, if you want to get them, you can go to tyrashow.com and, and you can find out how you can get all of Naomi Campbell's products. Now, when we come back, I want to talk about something that's very close to my heart and the reason why I did this show in the first place, and it's about sisterhood. This is my crusade for this season, sisterhood, and I have a lot to say about it. And when we come back, you'll see. We'll be right back. Later, it's a showdown on the runway. Naomi and I set the stage for a clash on the catwalk. This one. Naomi became a serious force to be reckoned with, from gracing the covers of the top magazines of the world to being multiple designers' youth. And Naomi didn't stop there. She's lent a hand to such philanthropic efforts as Nelson Mandela's Children Fund. Great honor to have such an outstanding model. I really love you. Thank you. And organized a fashion show for Hurricane Katrina Rudy. With her energy and passion, she really does make a difference. Today is a beautiful day. Today I can rejoice because I have made peace with this woman right here. <laughs> I have made peace with Naomi Campbell. Yeah. And, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show is because sisterhood is so important to me. I feel like women hate on each other. We're jealous. We, we, we fall into prey. We become marionette puppets of what people think women are supposed to be. And it has to stop. I just think that females fight. There's dirty. competition everywhere. There is a dark side to sisterhood. And it involves breaking, not making bonds. I call it the seven deadly sins of sisterhood. The first sin, betrayal. She was sitting on top of him, and I just looked at them. It's hard for me to trust any girl, not because I lost my boyfriend, but because I lost my best friend. The second sin, manipulation. The whole time that the wife is having concerns that the husband's cheating, her friend is sitting there going, no, you're just overreacting. What are you talking about? He loves you. He's always talking about you. But she knows darn well she's sleeping with him. Number three, judgment. I look at everything when a girl walks in. I don't say she's pretty. I just pick what I don't like about her. The fourth sin, envy. Seeing that I had this very close relationship with her sister, it made her very envious of me. The envy just turned into bullying me. Number five, gossip. I confided her and told her about a guy that I was dealing with and how he performed in the bed, and it got around. I feel emotionally raped. Number six, competition. I literally hear my teammates say, I hope she misses a shot. I'd rather lose the game than for her to win it. And when all of these sins get out of control, you have the last of our deadly sins of sisterhood, resentment. That night, we both ended up wearing the same exact dress. Towards the end of the night, she spills punch on my dress. I was just embarrassed to the point of tears. Talking about these issues can turn resentment into resolution. That's why I'm calling all women to action. If Naomi and I can sit here and after 14 years of going through a, a living hell, yeah. you know, I feel like if I can do it, you can do it. And this is my call to action for women to support each other, to stop the competition, to stop the, you know when a woman walks in a room and you're like, oh, she thinks she's all that. <laughs> you know you know what I'm talking about? And a lot of the times what we're really saying is, oh my gosh, she looks fantastic, or she's so smart, or whatever it may be. Or you could be feeling very insecure yes. about yourself. Feeling insecure about yourself and tearing others down. And this is my call to action to get that to stop. And I'm creating a sisterhood initiative, a crusade, for us to be one and to stop the hate. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. 
We've all heard the seven deadly sins of sisterhood, and now I want to hear from you. And I want to hear from you how these things have affected your life. So first, go to tyrashow.com and find our new sisterhood page. And then I want you to email me your stories or a video or your personal diary pages or photos of examples of how we as women are not united. And I want to hear your stories and I want to hear the truth, okay? The pain that you've gone through, or maybe the pain that you've caused. We're going to feature your stories right here on our show, and I'm going to challenge all of you to take on those seven deadly sins, and together we can change these negative, these negative relationships, you guys, into positive sisterhoods. I can't wait to hear your stories. So we're not going to stop the hate just yet, because when I come back, when we come back, Naomi Campbell and I are going to be working the runway, but it's a dueling competition. We're a competition. Naomi and I against each other on the runway. I can't, I can't work with it. Right and other considerations for the Tyra Banks Show, provided by. At home for sharing this moment with Naomi and I. It was very emotional for me, and it was a cleansing and a therapeutic. Therapeutic, Very therapeutic session that we had with each other and closure and closure so thanks for hanging out with me everybody with this and I want to thank you for being brave and coming here and no, I, I don't you. know if I'll know it's still it's real until tomorrow you know but thank you but so much. If you much. don't I'll give you my number you can call me. I can call you? <laughs> oh Lord. You I won't have the number up. Okay well now it is time to do our dueling oh, runway. La, 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 la. Okay. <laughs> There's a twist. The twist is I have to work the runway like Naomi walks. And I she has to work the runway like, like I walk. So let's see. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna try to do you. Don't forget this. What do I do? 